moving on from that one we're going to quickly talk about this because i didn't mention it prior when it actually did happen so as most of you are aware alessandro micheli the designer for gucci has unfortunately stepped down from his role left or fired who knows when it comes to fashion because everyone's kind of trying to protect their reputations and not really tell the truth but essentially after the glitz and glams of all of these amazing shows and this kind of um quirky kooky ugly chic that he kind of brought to the forefront at gucci it now looks like he's currently going to go away and it's weird because I feel like the last big project they had in the pipeline that sort of was presented by him or his team or his tenure was obviously the, the Palace collab, which I felt like was an incredible waste of, you know, fabric. I feel like a lot of that stuff will end up in an ocean somewhere, strangling a flipping turtle for the most part. But hey, everyone needs another new hoodie with flipping, you know, some embellishments on it or whatever it may be. But it did feel like a bit of a weird cash grab, a bit of a weird um, collaboration in the first place, but to show what those two brands share in terms of, you know, customers in terms of vision in terms of appeal taste or whatever it may be but here yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do to kind of keep the youths on your side but after all that kind of glitz and glam after the show with the twins after doing a show on um hollywood walk what's that thing called um there's one they did outside in la where all the stars are um on the floor i forgot what it's called the name escapes me now but there was a lot of money put into gucci during his tenure and i think in general he did a really good job for what he presented i feel like maybe now if you're really being cutthroat just in from a purely aesthetic point of view maybe that alessandro kind of um, vision of gucci is a little bit tired now people are maybe a little bit over the kitschy ugly sort of nature of it quirky whatever you want to call it maybe they need a bit of a refresh but i still did think you know he did an incredible job in terms of awareness of gucci in terms of mostly i say in terms of appeal when it comes to a customer i feel like people that wore gucci nowadays kind of treated it the same way when people used to treat tom ford gucci in terms of they felt like they were wearing a piece of armor like it was a real luxury piece that kind of made them feel beautiful made them feel sexy made them feel cool and i feel like he did the same thing even though his clothes were far less um you know they, they didn't really have as much sex appeal as maybe a tom ford but it definitely had that cool it factor when it came to the things that he did for sure and 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 let the record reflect alessandro is definitely one of the best dress designers out there think about the designs that come out at the end of their runway shows and what they dress like one example being the guy that i love and i'm a big fan of jw anderson you know um he also designs at Luebe and i've got loads of Luebe pieces i've got some jw anderson at pieces too and i love the guy the great designer clearly an incredibly smart dude but god almighty I was incredibly smart and talented, but God Almighty, he has probably some of the worst personal style I've ever seen. It's always navy. It's always beat down trainers. He always looks like he just woke up, like he looks terrible. But of course, he's completely, you know, pours all his creative juices and talents into his clothes. And then you look at the flip side, somebody like a Rick Owens, who I'm of course obsessed with. He looks incredible as well. Whenever he's coming again at the end of the runway, he's probably the classic archetype for his own brand outside of um, what's his face, the guy that works with him. Um, who also might be his side piece who knows i forgot the guy's name but you know, it escapes me now but he also is kind of maybe a you know a, a good sort of avatar for what rick owens do and another world dress designer i can probably think of might be um laquan smith is another one he always looks flipping dashing when he comes at the end of the runway too but yeah alessandro needs to get bonus points for looking amazing at the end of these shows he's really 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 well dressed but his article courtesy of vogue it says Alessandro Michele is exiting Gucci after an extraordinary seven year run. It feels like it's been longer in it, but I guess that's all the resort collections. It makes makes you feel like designers have been at houses or at brands way longer than they actually have been there. It's only seven years. It legit feels like it's been ten plus. But Bamba routed. Anyway, it continues. Um Alessandro Michele is exiting Gucci. Uh, Kering announced today the Roman designer had an enormously successful nearly eight year run as creative director that reversed the fortunes of the Italian heritage label and changed his outlook on fashion. Michele was a Tom Ford hire and worked under Frida Gianni, who was plucked. Um, she was plucked from the accessory studio by Gucci CEO Marco Bizzari, an unexpected choice if ever there was one. Early request for interviews with the scruffy haired designer who came out for his first buy in 2015, um, surrounded by his team, had to wait for the then unknown to go through media training in a statement bizarre said i was fortunate to have the opportunity to meet alessandro at the end of 2014 since then we've had the pleasure to work closely together as gucci has charted a successful path over the last eight years i would like to thank him for his 20 years of commitment to gucci 
and his, his vision and devotion and unconditional love for his unique house and during his tenure of creative director. So he was working at Gucci, the brand, for 20 years. He was definitely eight and he leaves like this. Uh, off the back of a massive collaboration there's not going to be a big swan song he's not going to get the benefit of having like a final show where he can come out at the end bow receive flowers and kisses from adoring fans and celebrities he just gets a social media post and a, and a pr release or something i wonder what, what that's about i wonder if this is because brands are legitimately bleeding money these houses and they don't want to put on another show essentially paying for paying for a farewell for somebody if they can just invest that into the hiring of a new person and maybe put that to their signing bonus or whatnot but i find that really really distasteful how can you be somewhere for 20 years and you get you know you get what a golden handshake via email or maybe all your login stop working one day and then you don't get the opportunity to kind of have a public farewell in the same way maybe you had like a public introduction that feels really strange so maybe there is a firing involved maybe there is something else um something nefarious behind the scenes that occurred who really knows um, let's skip this. Let's skip Riz Ahmed before he starts going into some slam poetry about you know where you're from. Uh, continues here. So if Michelle was um, sorry, if McKelly was a shy or reluctant front man at first, he made it an instant impact. Or oh, he made an instant impact. His first hit walked um, his debut uh, wins. Sorry, his first hit walked his debut women's runway for fall 2015. That season's kangaroo line loafers had Gucci's familiar horse bit hardware, but otherwise announced that Michele would be taking the label in a more eclectic, eccentric direction. That's what I'd say, eccentric instead of being kooky and whatever else I was saying. Look at that. I wonder what flipping, what's his face is going to do? What's his name again? Um, Jared Leto. He's probably going to be distraught because he was a big advocate of flipping Gucci. He loved Gucci just as much as flipping Kanye loves flipping Balenciaga and Demna. He was always wearing that stuff to the point where you felt like he wasn't just getting stuff sent to him. He was legitimately spending some of his own money and buying Gucci and really kind of going the extra mile to kind of show the love and appreciation, which is definitely something you'd love as a designer. You get someone on board, you pay the money to wear your stuff and then they're actually going out of, you know, they're going out of their way to buy more stuff that they want and with their own hard-earned money because you'd imagine some of these celebrities, you know, they're probably, even though they earn a lot of money, they probably are a bit tight with the stuff that they end up going to buy because they get stuff so free for so often in it. But what an incredible look here, both of them wearing for Met Gala 2022. It says, um, from the get-go, he establishes a magpie aesthetic, lifting literally from, um, you name the decade and time, expanding style and ushering in an era of gender non-conformity that continues today while growing a loyal fan base and a usual thick of Hollywood um, in the process. You know what, as well, to be honest, to, yeah, that's a good point, to give him props. That non-gender conformity thing or that gender non-conformity thing was really cool, and he did it in a really kind of matter-of-fact, casual non sort of uh, bells and whistle type of way there wasn't a big announcement there wasn't this you know huge manifesto it was just him sending clothes down the runway that looked like it could be worn by a man or a, or a woman right simple as that there was nothing else in between it was just like whatever you know in terms of a masculine feminine look he went to go for but there was this there was no real clear line between what was men's what was women's and i loved it just in a subtle sometimes just a subtle introduction of a really um high heel on the loafer or some really tight trousers or a little crop top or some lace little things here and there that kind of gave you the idea that hey that top could actually look good on a woman it'll actually look good on a, on a, on a guy also it continues um Da, da, da. Michelle's singular vision seduced the likes of Jared Leto, Michelle's doppelganger, Dakota Johnson, Billie Eilish, Harry Styles, whose collaboration with designer Ha 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 recently arrived in stores. But yeah, Harry Styles is definitely someone who's going to be distraught too because he loves Gucci. He's always head to toe in that. His stylist is always putting him in some fresh looks for that also with his tour. In him, perhaps they saw a kindred soul. He studied costume design at Rome's Academy of Costume and Fashion. In any case, he cultivated a tight knit group. His Gucci family was a merry band of artists who wore their hearts, sometimes literally on their sleeves that maybe explains the whole theatrical nature of gucci shows and whatnot and how extra they were and how yeah the extra theatrical and also i wonder if this kind of basis or this kind of training as a costume designer similar to what matthew williams was prior right matthew williams um used to be a costume designer if i'm not mistaken for lady gaga when they used to date back in the day which is basically his first introduction to making clothes so that you know you would imagine maybe led eventually to weirdly enough to bin trill that then led to elix and then led to him doing um obviously Givenchy at the moment i wonder if there's something about doing costume design we having to kind of invent these you know costumes essentially for a particular 
um, show, whatever it may be, or particular performance out of your, you know, out of thin air, maybe taking inspiration from some fashion pieces, but you kind of get your 10,000 hours there and you're working really to tight deadlines. You're having to nip, you know, edit things, cut things, trim things, you know, maybe cut and sew things, maybe cut and paste things. I wonder if that is part of some of the special sauce, some of the, you know, the extra level, the guys who don't, maybe don't do conventional fashion training in terms of doing an MA, you know, in terms of a BA doing, you know, fashion design or whatever, maybe a pattern cutting, maybe doing costume design might be a good way into it. I'm not too sure. Who knows? But anyway, me me comparing Mich- <laughs> um, Alessandro Michele to Matthew Williams is definitely going to get some people hot and bothered anyway. But hey, continue. Michele had a flair for rule breaking hookups. There was a full 2021 hacker project with his caring stable mate, um, Demna for Balenciaga, which I think might have spelled the end of collaborations for me. That might have been where I, like, you know, I'm tapped out with these collaborations. I'm done. Because I thought that was god awful. There were some bags that were pretty decent as well. Um, but for the most part, I thought all of it was horrendous. Um, and some of it, and for the most part, I think similar to what that Gucci, like I said, Gucci and Paris would probably end up the same way. That Balenciaga and um, Gucci stuff hasn't aged well. You look back at some of the stuff now and it looks really, really, really crass. And I think the same thing would eventually happen to that Palace and Gucci collab. I'd imagine. Who knows? I'm just an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. Early in the pandemic, Michele enlisted the director, Gus Van Sant, to create a short film set in his hometown of Rome, indulging his love for movies. When he was taken to task for lifting from the Harlem um, Cotier Dapper Dan, Gucci went into business with him, and it was during his tenure that the company launched a vault, an online resale project to rework treasures from the label's Jet Set Heyday and e-commerce um, Imperium for the on-the-rise designers that won the seal of approval among them. Colleen Strader, Hilary Tamroy, whatever her name is, Bianca Sanders, and Rui Zhu. To be fair, the Dapper Dan stuff, as great as I think that was, there was a lot of pressure there. And I think you know, Gucci probably had to do the right thing, especially when you consider all the bad press that was happening around Dolce Gabbana. And I think that was also around the time RIP to flipping George Floyd when he was murdered, I'm pretty sure. So there's a lot of social pressure around for these brands to do a lot of recognizing of what you'd say minority voices in their overall brand legacy and success and kind of bringing them in and sort of kind of giving them jobs and helping them out that way instead of just kind of having them be you know customers on the outside in and not really taking part or contributing in any kind of meaningful way so as great as it was i kind of felt like their arm was twisted and they kind of were put in a position where they were sort of shamed into giving dapper down a role but i still like that he got the recognition regardless you know because the last thing you want is somebody like that when they're gone to then suddenly get their flowers but it was good to see them get embraced um dapper down especially to get embraced by the fashion industry you know now in real time and we could all see it and the record could reflect his most prolific collaborator was partner giovanni attili who drafted what have to be fashion's most scholarly if sometimes impenetrable show notes the full 2018 source material donna harway's cyborg manifesto helped produce one of michele's most memorable shows for the house complete with models carrying life like replicas of their own heads the collection was a metaphor for how people construct their identities with the help of the machines and other non-natural additions we are the dr frank of our own lives michele said at a time but he is the most human designer of these deeply ruminative romantic so Anyway, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you get it. You know, some great ambassadors there. Lady Gaga clearly wearing it and making it look amazing. I'm just curious as to what happens next with someone like that. If you've been working at Gucci for 20 years and you were the head designer there for flipping eight, um, nearly eight years, what do you do now? Especially if it's, it feels like you kind of got fired. I don't know why, because I felt like, you know, for once, if there is a fashion brand out there where I believe the sale numbers, because for, for me, I'm one of those people that don't believe the sales numbers. I think they fob them a lot. Um, similar to like the music industry when it comes to first week sales I think there's a lot of fobbing and faking of the sales numbers personally for me even if the companies are publicly listed I just don't trust the numbers I'm not too sure why uh, you know maybe because I live in a metropolitan city of London and I go out a lot and I don't really see a lot of people wearing the stuff that they purport to be selling a lot of but if there's one brand I do see a lot of people wearing especially regular schmegular people it's definitely Gucci I feel like Gucci has definitely done well in terms of you know whatever influence or marketing they've done whatever cool factor that they have people legitimately feel like wear gucci the same way they wear balenciaga in actual irl so i wonder if that being the case if it was a firing because why else would you let go of someone like that unless you legitimately fought for the higher up because it seems that these board members have got their finger on the pulse if they were able to pluck flipping alessandro from where was he working at accessories and give him that role um you know somebody that was completely unknown who had to do media training 
it shows that they got their eye on the ball. So it's clearly a ball that knows where I'll go on. So maybe they were noticing the shifting sea change. They were seeing how things were going. Like, you know what? Let's get in front of this before this goes really tits up. And let's get him out here now at the top or why is he's currently at the top sort of thing. And then we can kind of move on that way. Because the last thing you want is your brand to kind of bleed dry and stagnate over a very short period of time. You don't want to die, you know, from a thousand cuts. You just want to, you know, uh, cut it off as soon as possible. But I wonder what he wants to do next. What would you do? 20 years working for one brand and then eight years leading it. Do you go and start your own thing? I don't know if that's really worth his hassle. You know, for the, as much as I'd like a lot of these guys to start their own thing talking about starting their own thing where the hell was phoebe philo for instance what the hell happened to that return there was a big kerfuffle about that press releases getting her own namesake brand i think it was meant to be backed by lva if i'm not if i'm not mistaken and we haven't seen one iota of a real piece that kind of showed us that she's actually back so i wonder if you know the day-to-day -day struggle and hassle of being a designer the amount of resort like i said i was surprised it's only seven years he's been at gucci the amount of resort collections you do spring summer autumn winter capsule collections collaborations on top of it like it's just non-stop and again don't get me wrong he's not designing everything but he's still having to oversee things he's still having to choose things he's still having to set the tone set the pace approve this approve that it's a really consuming job it definitely definitely must be you probably must look forward to August so much every year, right? I think August is the month where all fashion people decide to kind of go and enjoy themselves and go to flipping nice exotic areas and kind of unwind and do nothing, you know, in terms of related to fashion. But I don't know, man. I wonder, will he want to come back? Will he want to just have a break and chill or maybe just turn into a quasi-consultant and maybe do something like what Haida Adkemen is doing at the moment, which I feel like he kind of works behind the scene on a sort of hush-hush basis, maybe consulting for some brands and working behind the scenes as a quote, a quote unquote ghost designer i wonder if you'll do the same sort of thing or maybe the attention and the adoration from people um in media and public is just too much and you can't turn that faucet off and you just want more and more of it he's going to get under that tap and start sucking on that celebrity tap and kind of put his own thing out who knows but um safe travels regardless on this next journey alessandro you did an amazing job at gucci i enjoyed watching your shows legitimately gucci shows are one of the only shows maybe apart from rick balenciaga and a few others that i and maybe gmbh that i actually watched i enjoyed watching the shows. maybe even prior to shows but for the most part he definitely had good shows i enjoyed every single one of them i love the fresh approach to mod to the casting i love that nothing was try hard the gender non conformity just happened the casting being diverse was just a thing it wasn't part of that something that they're waving in the air they just kind of lived it they breathed it and i feel like the people that actually wore it and were kind of quote-unquote influencers in it really made the, the brand look even really really cool when they actually wore it so big up alessandro absolutely amazing work hopefully you're going to do bigger and brighter things going forward my friend